She gets doubled. Why is Sabrina sitting on the wing? Cut to the hoop. This should be a simple cut. Look, everyone's ball watching right now and they're doubling. Cut to the hoop, Sabrina, because when you cut, you either drag Kayla and Bridget Carlton with you or you drag Bridget Carlton with you and probably Stewie's able to see Benajah Laney corner drift three or just circle the ball around and now JJ's wide open at the top of the uh, top of the three-point line. So we run the UCLA action again and I want y'all to watch Sabrina on this action right here and this is what this is something that just annoys me with with Sabrina's movements. We watch if your favorite player is Steph Curry, you should know Steph does most of his damage with the ball being out of his hands. Like his off ball movement, his gravity, he really uses his gravity to manipulate the defense and basically wreck the defense. So here we see Kayla getting physical with Sab off the screen. Sab's just running that like Sab's not even looking to set up Michaela. She's not sorry Michaela she's not even looking to set up McBride like she's just running with McBride just getting bodied everywhere there's no purpose in Sab's movements right now because as of right now if a defender wants to be physical with you I'm eyeing the ball handler I'm eyeing whoever has the ball and okay McBride sees that there's a screen incoming I'm shoving McBride right into the screen and going back door for a layup but now we're fighting with Kayla we're just running with no purpose right now we run into Stewie we basically set a screen on ourselves just to catch the ball right near the freaking half court line. Now shot clock's winding down. We're trying to create something. No one on the floor is really creating their shot. Ball swings back to Sab and she has to put up some BS. Sab is flustered. Alana Smith's locking her up. Reset Sab and we dribble out of bounds. Sab just reset. You are the point guard. There is no such thing as over dribbling. Relax. Keep dribbling. Keep the pressure on the defense. Face up. Look at the hoop. Look at your options. You want the defense to get off of you? Make yourself a threat. Make yourself an option. Another offensive set again. Sab picks up the ball again, which just allows Nafisa Collier to jump all over her. Now our options are screwed. So Sabrina should be assessing this. Okay, tip. Cut you off. Just reassess because the spacing is bad. You got Kelsey Plum, Tiffany Hayes in front of you, Gustafson right on the right at the top of the key. You got Alicia Clark face guarding Stewie. So the spacing is bad. So just bring the ball back out, reset the offense. And we do the Cardinals Sabrina Sin where we pick up the ball. Sabrina cradles the ball from the three point line. There are no options at this point. Like she's basically been forced into a tough shot, right? 17 seconds left on the shot clock and we're picking the ball up at the three point line. So we throw up some BS, it goes in, but this is just horrible offense. Ab sets up for a three point shot. Now this is, again, this is the wrong pick and roll read. Asia Wilson is now the primary defender and the secondary defenders are basically two feet out of the paint. Right, so as we come off of the screen, this is what we should be scanning. This is what we should be reading. If Asia Wilson commits to me, I can either drive past her or I have the easy pocket pass to JJ for open lane drive layup, right? If Asia Wilson backs up, I'm shooting this three. If Asia Wilson staggers and stunts and tries to stunt at me, stunt at JJ, I'm walking her down all the way into the paint. If I go up with the layup, I miss. JJ most likely is there for the offensive rebound since Asia was contesting. This does not have to be a three-point shot. And this probably shouldn't be a three-point shot. But this is not the right option. This is not the correct read. So Sab catches here on the wing. We have JJ right there in the paint. Chelsea Gray's on her. And we have KT in the corner right here. This pass should be zipped to one of these two options. I don't think you can go wrong here. You have an open three or an open layup with JJ. Maybe half contest by Chelsea Gray, right? Instead, we sit on the ball. We raise the ball above our head. And we're all over the place with the ball. There's no reason to hesitate here. This should be a fired pass to KT in the corner or a pass straight up to JJ in the paint, right? Instead, we're all over the place with the ball. We give KT a bad pass, we get it back, and we jack a three. That's just bad offense. That's horrible offense. And Sab basically has Kelsey Plum now on her hip, right? And we're trying to bait the foul, and we launch another three again. We get rid of Kelsey Plum as our primary defender. Who is our next primary defender? It's Chelsea Gray, so we're going to be reading Chelsea Gray. Notice, we are on the three-point line. And Chelsea Gray has stepped to us because she anticipated that we already beat 
Kelsey Plum. So now she's thinking she has to help. If we're reading our options properly, if we're reading Chelsea Gray, we understand our best option is Stewie here in the corner. Kayla is setting a weak, uh, sorry, a strong side hammer for her. So there are so many options here. We don't have to bait this foul. This is not the best shot we can get. Chelsea Gray has committed to the ball and you haven't even passed the three point line yet. Easy pass to Stewie in the corner for an open three. Is now 1v1 with Nafisa Collier. Now, if you're going to attack the big, Sabrina has to veer into Nafisa Collier here. Use your body weight. Sabrina isn't small. She's 5'11", 6 foot. Use your body weight to veer into the shot blocker. Get her going away from the hoop so you can go up with the layup. Instead, Sab dribbles, picks up the ball in the paint. Easy block for Fee. Sab catches the ball off this great backdoor cut, and she catches it two feet in the paint. Now, the last line of defense is Bridget Carlton. However, Again, this goes back to Sab's offensive IQ. She is not an acrobatic finisher. She's not a finesse finisher. So if she's being met by the last line of defense, the next option would be to dribble and kick this ball to Benajah Laney for the open three in the corner. Instead, she challenges Bridget Carlton and misses the layup. Sabrina has three offensive options that she misses here. And the reason why this is such a cause of concern is because these are the plays you're going to have to make in the playoffs. And this is the sharpness I talk about when it comes to Sab running the point guard position and the New York Liberty offense. So here she comes off of screen for Leo, misses Leo on this cut. Benajah comes around, finds Sab on the wing. Now, instead of just resetting, yes, there are eight seconds left on the shot clock. Instead of just resetting the offense, looking for a better option because the spacing is bad, Sab takes a sidestep three. Back, Sab sets a screen for Benajah Laney, low two-man game, and we end up in the exact same situation as we did the previous possession, except this time, the shot blocker does commit to Sab. This is Elena Smith. The shot blocker commits to Sab, but Sab decides to challenge Elena Smith instead of just feeding the easy dump off to JJ. Now, she has a wide open lane to the paint and opts to take a pull-up mid-range shot. Now, she does get fouled by NECA, but for most guards, this is just a straight line drive to the hoop. I always preach for Sab to keep dribbling, keep her dribble alive. She keeps pressure on the defense when she does that. So she bodies up on Skylar Dickens-Smith. Perfect. JJ has a Gortat screen seal in the paint, so now the rim run is open. Even though I just praise her for keeping her dribble alive, she picks up the ball from the free throw line trying to make this layup. Somebody has to tell Sab that there is no dribble limit counter for her. There's no dribble shot clock for her. If she keeps her dribble alive, Skylar Diggins is now out of the play. She bodied, bodied her out of the play already. She has an open left hand layup to the hoop, but instead she picks up the ball from the free throw line and now makes this layup attempt even harder for herself. Sab at this point, she can't be bad at every other aspect except free throw shooting and three pointers, right? Some part of her game has to be developed. And really, whoever is her trainer at this point, I don't know if they should still have a job. Because if this is the best way Sab can attack a big, that's that's a problem. And a lot of people might overlook this and might give Ezzy just a regular block and be like, okay, well, you got the ball back. But this is also one, an opportunity to get a bucket. It's an opportunity to maybe get a foul on a big. And if we don't have if we don't have a couple of moves in our finishing bag, and this is what we have four or five years into our WNBA career, that's a problem.